Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ashley Gleckman with the Global Composers Network, and today we're going to be taking a look at a quick tip for MIDI programming. So MIDI programming is something that's very important because it's something you're going to be doing very, very often in any sort of DAW workflow. It's something that you do on a repetitive basis because whenever you sort of input um, you know, MIDI information, sample libraries are at a point now where on any given library there's probably multiple parameters given um, modulation, expression, vibrato, etc., including if you needed to control different various mic positions as well. Um, you know, MIDI programming is something that's very, very important in any workflow. So we're going to be taking a look at the absolute essentials of it, and that is the modulation, expression, and vibrato. So if we go into sort of any sample library here, we're just going to be taking a look today at uh, Spitfire Chamber Strings, and this goes along with any other library, but the parameters might be different. You can see here we have all these various controls here, dynamics, vibrato, release, tightness, and expression. Theoretically, what we can do is we can actually program each one of these things to a different fader on a MIDI controller. So right now I'm using the Panorama P1. Um, it's just a, it's a nice sort of MIDI controller that has various faders and buttons and stuff, so it's very easily programmable. So if we just right click on this, you can see it's automatically assigned to CC1. And so on my controller here, it's controlling the dynamics. Theoretically, what Dynamics is doing is it is controlling the volume of the instrument, um, both dynamically and timbrely, actually. So timbrely is pretty much the, the sonic personality of the instrument. So when a French horn is playing very soft, the actual sound is very, very different from when it's playing very, very loud. So you can see already, just playing like that is much better than So in general, there's three main methods that I've come to observe that are probably the most common when it comes to real-time MIDI programming. The first one is no hands at all, so you're simply playing the chords and then you program afterwards. Second one is using only modulation for dynamics and to control the sonic sort of timbre of the instrument. And when you're actually playing dynamics in real time, It gives you that sort of uh, flexibility and it really it makes it sound a little bit more personalized and so I definitely recommend recording with dynamics. Um, now the third one that I've seen pretty often is actually linking expression and dynamics which sounds a little bit like this. And in general what this really does is it just um, it adds more pressure to the volume of the, mod of the modulation, because when we're controlling modulation, we are controlling volume, but when we control expression as well, it adds just a little bit more of that um, tightness when it comes to the volume. So that's something that you can also do as well. I usually like to add an expression after I add in the dynamics. So I have this piece here, and I'm just going to record with no hands, no MIDI anything, and we're gonna take a look at how to program from absolutely nothing. So first things first, we're just going to go in and quantize it. So usually what I like to do is for long chords like this, I like to just do a um, whole note and then I like to go to functions, legato, just to make sure that all the notes are completely connected. It looks like they pretty much were. I'm just going to go in and make sure that it sounds smooth because sometimes you can get some... You know, for example, what I'd like to do is just like to drag it over it ever so slightly so that you just get a little bit of... And then in this case, you can see it starts right on the line. We just sort of want to overlap them a little bit to give it more realism. And that seems like it's pretty good. So. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to record modulation on its own. So that's going to automatically be assigned to CC1. So if you have a controller that, you know, like a MIDI controller with a modulation wheel, it's automatically going to be controlling CC1. Um, but if you wanted to, you could learn MIDI CC and really you can connect it to anything. So now it's connected to CC72. So it really all depends on um, what, you, what you personally want. So 
So you can see this uh, modulation uh, parameter that we just recorded is sort of this weird translucent um, MIDI region that has nothing in it. All it has is the actual MIDI info uh, that we just recorded for modulation. So in order to make that part of the file that we recorded previously, which is this one, we have to go over here to the glue tool and just click it and then it's automatically going to be sort of put into the main um, MIDI that we recorded initially. So now we're going to record the expression. Okay, so now that we have modulation and expression, I'd just like to go in and make sure everything is smooth. Boom. Um, so we're going to sort of make that our crescendo point. Right. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with our expression. So you can see it already sounds a lot smoother and more realistic and a little bit more human because you have the expressive quality of it. Um, now, one other additional thing. So vibrato. So a lot of people will simply leave it at 50%, which isn't necessarily a problem. It isn't something where like the audience is going to notice, oh, they aren't controlling the vibrato. But if you want to add another level to the realism, you can actually control the vibrato. And I usually like to control it fairly subtly. So I don't like to do big crescendos like we did with the modulation and expression. I like to make it very subtle. So sort of like this. So let's just take a look at how we would do that. So we're just going to solo the consort patch. So you can see it's super, super subtle, but it changes the subtle characteristic of the instrument and just adds another level of um, that human element. Okay, so here is our vibrato, which is under, for some reason, the portamento. So again, you can see how it's a lot subtler and there aren't as big of leaps as there was in expression and modulation. So now when we play this contextually, so you can see already it sounds tons, tons better than what we initially had with just playing with both hands on the keyboard. And you can also, uh, like I said, record with just the modulation and then add the expression and the subtle sort of vibrato in the end. You can also control mic positions. So you know, you can see we just programmed this to the close mic, then the tree mic. And so there's so many different things that you can actually control with MIDI parameters. So MIDI programming is really all about achieving the most expressive sound. And that doesn't always mean the most realistic sound. Uh, with orchestral music, a lot of the times you might want to be trying to reach that realistic sound. Um, but, you know, with huge, gigantic Hollywood scores like Batman v Superman, um, you know, sometimes realism isn't always the way to go. For example, like for a timpani, you can't have super, super fast timpani lines in um, a real sort of orchestral setting because it's just not possible unless you have 10 timpani drums. But um, with, you know, MIDI and programming and everything like that, you can break the rules a little bit and sort of add another dimension that wouldn't be possible 
in the real world. So there is always um, a sort of wide open arena for breaking the rules of realism and uh, going outside the boundaries of the norm. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, do be sure that you subscribe down below and you will see all the latest videos from GCN, including interviews, quick tips, and more. And if you guys want to become more involved with GCN, check out our website at globalcomposersnetwork.net as well as our Facebook group. So thanks so much and I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day.